Well, hey, Grace Fellowship, my name is James. I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and we can't wait to get started with you in just a few minutes. Before we do that, Pastor Tim and I are gonna talk about our Sunday go-to breakfast. So we wanna know what your Sunday go-to breakfast is in the comments below. Give each other a hard time. If it's something you don't like, if someone says they like mini wheats and you like frosted, you know, frosty fruity pebbles, let them know. Let them know and uh, we'll get started in just a few minutes. Good morning, Grace Fellowship. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our online services today, whether you're watching at the 7.30 or the 9 o'clock, because mm -hmm. we have two now, so that's cool. Um, we just want to say thank you. Uh, if you're new here, we have a new here connection card in the description um, where we'll send you a free gift um, for filling that out as our way of just saying thanks for joining mm -hmm. us in the midst of all the things yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, but my name is James. I'm our Connect Pastor here. I'm joined by Pastor Tim, our lead pastor. Uh, Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm really excited about uh, what we're going to talk about this morning. Yes. Uh, I think most everyone uh, that calls Grace Fellowship home is going to be interested in in uh, what we talk about. And I'm interested to get the feedback because I, I, I guarantee you I will get some feedback. <laughs> One way or the morning. other. <laughs> so uh, if you're not offended uh, or inspired <laughs> or encouraged in some way this morning yeah. after the service, I have not done my job. So. Yeah, uh, it's a I'm, good message. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share what I've got. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited later on uh, <laughs> to see what happens yeah. as well. Um, just with everyone reopening, yeah. not reopening, you know, whatever. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, thanks for continuing to support our mission here at Grace. Um, you can continue to give online at connectedgrace.org backslash giving. Um, we have been blown away by the amount of support that we've gotten from Absolutely. The Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, the food yeah. pantry, just, you know, donations. Mm -hmm. um, it's been it's been really cool to see. And people have been reaching out to Grace, mm -hmm. you know, offering help and assistance and yeah. let, let us know where we can be of service to people. And we really appreciate that. You're at, you're really being the church mm -hmm. to the situation and we are honored to be a part of it. Yeah, I know you're going to say it later, but you know, if there's anything we can do, um, we have a pastor mm -hmm. on call here every single week, um, and we would just love to be able to help mm -hmm. you out however we can, whether that's just through prayer, uh, over the phone, um, whatever it mm -hmm. looks like. Um, we we do want to be here for you guys, yeah. um, just to continue to connect with you guys. Yeah. Um, so Tim, what is your go-to Sunday breakfast? Oh my go-to Sunday breakfast? Like before church starts. Yeah, I try not to eat a lot. Uh, right. Uh, but I have I I eat RX bars. Mm. They're kind of like it a protein. Like 
<laughs> well, the one that I eat is a dark chocolate sea salt, which people who know me would not be surprised by that. Yeah. But they're one of the best, you know, uh, I'm not a fan of those kind of things. Like protein but, bars. But I eat one of those uh, every Sunday morning. Uh, and um, and then beyond that, I try not to snack because it affects. Yeah. You know, I, can I share something really personal? Do it. That's like what right before for. right before we taped this, I told you I've got to get the burps out. You know. Yes. So you know you have to be careful about what you ingest on a Sunday right. morning when you're speaking a lot, and it, this is far more information than the World Wide Web needs <laughs> to know. But you asked the question, and so yep. I try to limit it to, to, uh, to, to healthy get me through. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be, you know, doing yeah. that sort of thing on stage. Yeah. I try so. and eat a bagel. Okay, that's good. That's normally what I try to do. Mm -hmm. But my guilty pleasure Sunday breakfast is to go through the McDonald's drive through get a hash uh. brown and a Coke, and they have these chicken McGriddles. It's like, it's like spicy chicken plopped in between two little pancake things. Two levels of happiness. It's it's delicious. Absolutely, I love the McGriddle. That's, that's yeah. That's one of the best. Yeah. That's, yeah, that was made in heaven. Yep, yep. So so that's my Sunday yeah. go-to. So what's your Sunday go-to breakfast? Especially now that you guys are home, you're not rushing the kids out the right. door. Yeah, <laughs> you got time to make the bacon and eggs. What's your go-to breakfast? We want to know. You know what? I'm probably gonna have raisin brain crunch. Ooh, uh, this Sunday? Yes. So I will have, when they see this, I will have already had my <laughs> Raisin Bran Crown because I don't need the RX bar right, right now. So right. Doing it online, so. I'm interested to see, I'm gonna see if Tasty will make some cinnamon rolls Sunday. Oh, mm. that's really good. She makes some good cinnamon rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. So. <laughs> well, hey, thanks for joining us again. If you are new here one more time, don't forget to fill out the connection card in the description. We would love it uh, just to send you a gift uh, as our way of saying thanks for joining. Um, but hey, we're gonna jump into a time of worship. Yeah, let's get started. Let's get started. Good morning, Grace Fellowship. Join us this morning and worship together. I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. The waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy and all my days oh yes I will yeah oh I count on one thing the same God who's ever laid working on me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out yes I will lift you high when my heart is heavy yes I will bless your name I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy and all my days. Oh yes, I will for all my days. Oh yes, I will not choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. And I choose to praise. stand against yes I will lift you high in the 
Your name is unshaken. God, we worship you this morning. God, and we remind ourselves that regardless of the storm that we sense in our life, regardless of how unstable the waters seem around us, God, that you are in control. God, that you are so much bigger than the situation that we might be facing right in front of us. That you can see so much further than what we can see. God, that your patience is so much bigger than ours is. And just your wisdom. God, we just pray for a piece of your wisdom in your heart this morning. And we just uh, worship you and just ask that you would come into this place and just uh, just change us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Your name is unshakable. What a, a terrific thought. What a great thought uh, to lead us into worship. Uh, we are so glad that you're here this morning joining us online. And today I want to talk about uh, the situation that we find ourselves in uh, at this point in our journey through this co coronavirus uh, epidemic, pandemic. Uh, there's a lot of questions. We're, Indiana is in stage two of the, the reopening. And so a lot of questions uh, and thoughts are swirling around that situation. And so uh, we've gotten a lot of phone calls and emails and people asking us, hey, you know, things are opening up. So when are we opening? up? When, when can we come back to church? And I want to talk about uh, that this morning. Uh, how is the reopening going to happen? What is it going to look like? Uh, and so here's, here's the deal, friends. Grace Fellowship exists to con help connect people uh, to God, His church, and His world. Uh, that has always been uh, the mission of Grace Fellowship, the driving force behind everything that we do that guides all of our decisions. And so uh, even in this crisis, we are continuing to live out that mission. Uh, this crisis has given us other opportunities opportunities uh, to live out that mission, and it's probably going to change uh, how we live that, out that mission uh, in the future. So before we get into the specifics of the reopening, uh, I think it's important for us to uh, build a biblical framework uh, through which we think about uh, the issues surrounding uh, this uh, reopening. And I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to look at a passage from Romans chapter 14. So if you have a Bible or a device and you want to get that ready, Romans uh, chapter 14, uh, here's, here's the deal. When it comes to this whole idea of reopening any of it and all of it, Everyone has an opinion, uh, and a lot of a lot of those opinions differ. Uh, some of you, uh, I've, I've talked to, to many of you, some of you uh, think we should open up right away without any restrictions. Uh, some of you think that we should never have shut down in the first place. Uh, and then there are some of you who think even now it's, it's way too soon to even think about a reopening. And so the question is, what do you do about those uh, differing opinions? Uh, and so let me let me just ask you: Have you ever uh, disagreed with someone else's opinion? And in, is that person in the room with you right now? <laughs> Opinions. I mean, we all have them, and uh, they are they are not the same. And that's why you know we need wisdom to decipher between opinions and to be able to make uh, the choice that's best uh, for everyone concerned. Uh, friends, I'll tell you, there's nothing more uh, that the staff and the elders, the leadership of this church, want more uh, than for life at Grace Fellowship uh, to resume. I've always said there's no better place on a Sunday morning to be than at Grace Fellowship. But how we get back to that uh, in a way that's safe for everyone and preserves the unity and the mission of Grace Fellowship, uh, those are hard decisions uh, to make. So I'm going to talk about uh, the decisions uh, uh, but before we do that, here's a framework in which uh, I, I want us to think about or think through uh, this issue. Romans chapter 14. Uh, here's the context. Paul is addressing the church. Uh, he's, he's addressing a, a personal spiritual issue between two groups of people in the church, two groups of people with differing opinions, and each group has opinions that, that matter to them. And so Paul is addressing the question, how do you live out your faith? Uh, uh, in a particular situation when opinions differ, uh, when you have a position um, 
a, a personal conviction informed by your faith, uh, but someone else has a has a different conviction informed by their faith. Uh, one group holds to this position and another group holds to a different position, uh, which, which isn't a problem uh, when you have differing opinions. The problem comes in uh, when we start using that opinion to judge or evaluate or to criticize uh, someone who doesn't share that opinion. Okay, so are you with me? Have you ever been in that situation where opinions have differed and you've experienced conflict because of differing opinions? This is exactly what's happening uh, in the church at Rome, and Paul's talk is addressing this in chapter 14. So let us uh, let me walk you through these verses in Romans 14. Verse 1 says, As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over, and he uses the word opinions, not to quarrel over, over opinions. One one person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Now, Paul isn't making a case about meat eaters or vegans. Uh, that's, not, that's not what this is about. Here's, here's the story. You have believers from a Jewish background and in influence uh, that informs their conscience about uh, things they can do, uh, things uh, they can and cannot do, things that they can and cannot eat particularly. And then you have believers from a pagan background informing their conscience about what they can and cannot eat. Now, this was very common in the first century where you would go uh, into the market, where you would go to the meat market, and some of that meat uh, would have been sacrificed to an idol uh, in a religious ceremony earlier in the day, but then they would take that meat and they would sell it in the market. And so uh, Christians with a Jewish background uh, didn't think anything about it. Idols mean nothing. Uh, This meat means nothing. It's just as good as any other meat uh, sold in the market. However, uh, those believers who were once a part of that pagan worship, you know, they, they used to worship that way. They used to bow to that idol. They used to sacrifice that meat to that idol. And so their conscience uh, just wouldn't let them uh, participate uh, with anything associated with that meat. Uh, they, they couldn't buy it. They couldn't eat it. And if someone invited them into their, into their house and they found out that this was meat uh, previously sacrificed to an idol, their, their conscience just certainly wouldn't allow them uh, to participate in that meal. And so, you know, one person would look at that situation and say, well, that's that's silly, you know, it, it means nothing. Why, why are you making a big deal out of this? While another person would look at that and say, don't you understand where they've come from? Uh, you need to be more sensitive and understanding to what they're, they're dealing with. Uh, I, had a, I, I remember a friend, uh, uh, a friend of mine who, uh, after he gave his life to Jesus, uh, couldn't go bowling. He could not go bowling. Now, I grew up in the church, and the church that I grew up in uh, said that I couldn't dance, and that I couldn't drink, and that I couldn't play cards. Uh, but bowling wasn't on the list. I mean, it, actually, that was one of the few things I could do. Um, but for my friend, uh, everything about his pre-Jesus life was characterized uh, with bowling. The drinking, and the smoking, and the cursing, and the carousing, and the parties associated with his bowling league, all of the things that they did uh, while bowling characterized his life before Jesus. And so every time he, he, he thought about bowling or, or looked at a bowling alley, all of those things came back to him. In, in recovery circles, it's called a trigger. You know, those experiences that trigger a response to our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And my friend, it took him a very long time uh, before he began to experience the freedom that he had in Christ to go bowling. <laughs> so, um, this meat, um, in regards to the kingdom, is a non-issue. Uh, but with regards to someone's growth in the kingdom, was something that needed to be considered, Paul says, it may be nothing to you, but that doesn't mean it's nothing. Uh, And so he goes on in verse 3. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has welcomed him. Or another, God has welcomed both. Friends, the problem problem with opinions uh, is that the longer you hold them, 
Friends, the longer that you hold them, the harder it is to see them as an opinion. Therefore, the harder it is for you to surrender that opinion for the good of another. And worse, the greater the temptation is uh, to judge others who don't hold to that opinion. Paul goes on in verse 4. Uh, who are you to pass judgment on a person with a different opinion? He says, who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? Uh, it is before his own master, Jesus, that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. Now, here's the deal, friends. Paul had an opinion on this issue, and if we had time to go to 1 Corinthians 8, uh, we would find out what Paul's position was on this. But here, uh, Paul, Paul is not saying that certain people are right or certain people are wrong. This is not a right or wrong issue at this point, but he's also not saying that you can have whatever opinion you want. So just think whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. Issues of conscience are real in the life of a Jesus follower, and it affects our freedom in Christ. So what's important in this kind of a situation is to allow the Word of God uh, to inform your opinion, to shape and even change your opinion if it's harming your growth and your freedom in Christ. He goes on in verse 5, he says, One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. And then he says, Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. In other words, don't, don't just let your opinion rule the situation. Hold lightly to your opinions because your, your opinion might not be right. Be humble enough to consider other opinions. And most of all, do your homework. Study the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to inform whatever opinions you are free to hold. Seek counsel. Pray for guidance and wisdom when it comes. Because here's the deal, friends. No opinion matters more than truth. And if it's a choice between opinion and truth, you have to surrender your opinion to truth. And what's more, friends, if there's a choice between opinion and love, well, friends, we are called to love. Uh, when truth allows for a differing opinion, uh, when, when you're free to hold differing opinions, we have to understand that no opinion matters more than loving a brother, and that's exactly that's that's the point that Paul is making in this passage. He's addressing the question: What do you do when believers disagree, and for good reason? So, if you're sensing a, a setup uh, to what we're going to talk about this morning, uh, you are very discerning because that's exactly what I'm doing. I am I am setting you up because, friends, this issue, this situation in front of us. Uh, is very important, and how we under, uh, how we understand this situation, how we move forward into this situation, the reopening of America, and the reopening of churches, the reopening of Grace Fellowship, uh, is something that we need to have wisdom about. But it's something that all of us have opinions about. So let's talk about this, um, and let's back up eight weeks. Eight weeks ago. The two driving principles behind closing the doors of Grace Fellowship were submitting to the governing authorities, having respect and honor for our governing authorities, and loving our neighbors, loving our community well, which both, both of which are biblical mandates. We are commanded, we are called to do that. Now, just I, I, I want to insert this, this thought right now. Politics does not play into this. Uh, we all have opinions about what the government is doing, uh, but, you know, the government isn't trying to shut down the church. In fact, uh, quite the opposite. Uh, in many places, is giving the church an exemption over other uh, public gatherings. Um, if I'll say this. If the government were to say, you know, everyone else can gather but the church— well, that would be a different uh, situation. That would be a different issue, which would require from us a different response. But that's not where we are at this point in this situation. So, submitting to the governing authorities who, for public health reasons, uh, have set restrictions on social gatherings and loving our neighbors well. Friends, we don't want to be the source of infection for anyone, and we certainly don't want to give uh, the impression uh, that we disregard our governing authorities. We we want to care for our community, and we want our community to know that we care about their safety and their health by adhering to the restrictions and guidelines put in place by our government. 
And so those two principles for shutting things down are the same two principles for opening things back up, adhering uh, to government uh, guidelines and what is best, how can we be most loving uh, to, our commu- to our community. And underlying all of that moving forward is knowing uh, that we are going to have differences of opinions. So back to Romans chapter 14, Paul says, you know, don't make this about you. This, 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 is, about, this is not about you and your particular opinion. Uh, what matters is loving each other well. So how, how can we move forward in a wise and loving way? So let's talk about this. Um, uh, the elders and the staff uh, met last week and discussed a plan to reopen uh, the church building for services to allow people to come back on campus uh, for services on the weekend. We're still developing a written plan that will be pu- published in the next uh, couple of days that is aligned uh, with government recommendations and guidelines. And uh, it's, it's setting up a structure that we feel is best for you uh, who call Grace Fellowship home and for any visitor who would choose to walk through our doors uh, during this time. So right now, um, uh, this weekend, and I'll say that we're recording this on Thursday night, so just like the last eight weeks, things could change uh, in the next day, so we might have to amend this. Uh, but right now, if things go as projected, uh, we anticipate offering on-site services during phase four of uh, the Indiana Back on Track reopening plan. Right now, we're in stage phase two. Phase three starts tomorrow. Uh, phase four begins the week of June 14th. Now, understand me or, or hear me clearly, uh, we are... Uh, we are not committing to reopening on June 14th. Uh, we are projecting to reopen during phase four that begins the week of June 14th. It actually begins June 14th uh, and ends on July 4th where phase five uh, begins. So we are going to track the data. We are going to uh, uh, check the outcomes. We are going to look at the progress being made in our community uh, through phase three. And then we are going to decide on an exact date during phase four, which we feel like uh, might be good for us uh, to reopen. So that's that's the plan. The next question is, you know, why? Uh, why are we making this decision? What's the rationale uh, behind this particular plan? And I can... I can sense the response. I'm kind of feeling it through the camera. Some of you are saying, you know, well, that's good. That's good. I mean, I I feel like it's too early to come back right now. Actually, in phase four, if you were to open up, I don't know that I I would feel comfortable coming back even then. Some of you are thinking that. Others of you are saying, seriously? I mean, you know, you're waiting that long. Other churches are opening up. Why, Why aren't we? And friends, I get that. I get that. I mean, Listen, this is not a race or a contest to see which first opens up first. Uh, there are good, there are very good churches with very good reasons and plans uh, for opening up when they open up. We just have to decide as spiritual leaders uh, of Grace Fellowship uh, to make the best choice possible uh, for you and your family and friends. So give me a few more minutes. Hear me out. If you Are you guys still out there? Uh, hopefully you haven't tuned me out. Here's, here's the reason or the rationale behind uh, this decision. Friends, even in phase four, when we open up in phase four, social distancing recommendations will still be in place by the state of Indiana. And so it's the view of our leadership team, uh, in order to respect our governing authorities and to love our community well, we need to abide by those recommendations as uh, set f- forth by Our government, which means uh, that we are still going to be significantly limited in uh, the type of service we can offer, the quality of service we can offer, and the kind of experience you will receive when you come back on campus at Grace Fellowship. Listen, I mean, even if even if you choose to come back to services uh, in phase four you will not be coming back to Grace Fellowship as you have known it. It will not be the experience that you've been used to. It will not be the experience that you ultimately want. Uh, It just simply will not be the same because of these recommendations that we're adhering to. And you need to 
prepare yourself mentally and emotionally and spiritually uh, for that experience. And, and I, and I know I'm, many of you are saying, I just need to get together. I just, I just need connection. I need my community. And friends, that's just, that's, that's just it. You come back, uh, you might be in the same room, but friends, you are not going to experience the same community that ma- has made Grace Fellowship of what it is. Uh, you will not be able to shake hands. You will not be able to hug. Uh, you will be sitting six feet apart from anyone that you know other than your family. Uh, some of you are going to be wearing masks. Some of you are going to choose not to. And all of you <laughs> are going to have an opinion about that. Uh, by social distancing standards, uh, we can only accommodate 100 people right now in our auditorium. And so... Uh, you're going to be limited to the number of people that you will see. Uh, you're, you're going to walk th- into the building through one door, and then you're going to exit the building through another door uh, with limited, very limited interaction, social interaction with the people that are there. Uh, we can't offer you coffee, uh, which is a good thing because we can't open our restrooms. And <laughs> if, if you were to sneak into a restroom, I'll, I'll tell you, someone's going to be following you in there, wiping down everything that you've touched. Uh, and speaking of that, I mean, between each of our services, we're going to have an enor- we will need an enormous volunteer team cleaning every surface to make it safe for the next group to come in. According to the experts that we've been listening to, um, singing uh, is far worse than breathing. We know that singing is just as bad as sne- sneezing. Uh, so you cannot sing without wearing a mask. Um, what is that experience going to be like? Uh, if you're 65 years old or older, or if you have a pre-existing medical condition, it's recommended that you not come. But what if you choose to disregard that recommendation and show up? Now you've placed the leadership in a position where they, you know, what are we going to do with that? Are we going to keep you from coming in? Are we going to ask you to go home? Are we going to take that risk for you to be here? Some of you are caring for elderly parents uh, and neighbors. And so uh, the issue of protecting yourself so you can protect others uh, plays into your choice of coming or not coming. And what about non-pre-existing conditions? What's a non-pre-existing condition? Well, friends, it's called a family. Uh, Many of you have small children. And you know this, you, we cannot social distance small children, try to keep a mask on them for 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, it's, it's going to be impossible. So if you bring them, uh, they are going to have to be in the service with you. We can't offer a nursery. We can't offer quality children's ministry uh, with the guidelines that we have to adhere to. And, and I'll just insert, this is extra credit. I'm just going to throw this in as a personal note. Uh, I'm an empty nester, but when my children were little, both of my children hated anything with a mask. They were terrified. They were traumatized. Halloween was not a holiday we celebrated. They hated Santa Claus. They hated the Easter Bunny. Anything with a mask traumatized them. And so I'm just, I'll just say this. If I was a parent with small children during this situation, for that reason alone, I, I wouldn't bring them back. I would not want them to have that experience in the church that they've grown to love coming to. Now, friends, this is about opening up in phase four a month from now. Uh, This is what what it's going to be like in phase four. Now, having said that, we are open to the idea of of reopening in phase four, but we all have to realize what's involved in making that opportunity possible. And again, I'll say every one of us has an opinion about that. So what's the bottom line, friends? Here's, here's, here's what I want to say, friends. Grace Fellowship uh, has never been confined to a building. Grace Fellowship is not a building. And no government and no virus is ever going to shut us down. The Church of Jesus Christ has never been closed. So the question for us, friends, is simply how can we be the church when we're not coming to church, when we're not coming to a physical building. And friends, you have already demonstrated the church in these last eight weeks. You have been connecting with people online and socially. Uh, You have been caring for your neighbors. You have donated enormous amounts of food and money to care for those in need. 
And so I just want to say to you out there, uh, if you feel the need for human connection, you know, it is possible for you to do that. I mean, invite people you're comfortable with into your home and watch these services online. You can, you can do that. Discuss the message afterwards. Uh, celebrate communion together. If people are comfortable coming into your home and you're comfortable having them in your home, I say go for it. Uh, listen, we, we don't just think that's awesome. We actually think that's the church in operation. And so you have to choose for yourself what is a wise decision and what's best for you. Some of you are still connecting in small groups. We have the technology to do that. You can meet online. You can meet in Zoom calls. And so I would, I would encourage you to continue to pursue that. The weather is getting nicer. And so, you know, you can meet with people outdoors where you are maintaining a, a comfortable distance uh, with each other. Friends, there are ways to be the church without actually coming to a church building. So here's the, th- here's the thing. For the next three weeks, um, we are going to be online like we have been for the last eight weeks. Uh, but on June 14th, uh, we are planning our next outdoor service. So put that on your calendar. Uh, come to our parking lot. Bring your lawn chair. I, you, you could probably sit in the parking lot and wave to the people uh, that join you uh, in that service. Uh, and then going forward... Uh, In phase four, if it looks like it's safe and manageable for us to reopen the building, we will certainly move in that direction. But again, it's quite possible uh, if the leaders feel like uh, the progress has not been made, if the data uh, tells us otherwise. uh, Friends, we would just rather wait until we can have an experience uh, that is meaningful and fulfilling uh, for you. Here's the deal. Number one, we want to shepherd you well. So we, we have opportunities. We have pastor on call every week. If you need to, call, if you need to talk to someone, have someone pray with you, uh, we call the office. We can do that for you. We have a prayer group that meets every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. You can participate in that prayer group uh, to receive prayer. Uh, you can submit prayer requests online. We pray for those requests. We want to shepherd you well. But friends, we also want to be a voice of comfort and hope to our community. We want to love our neighbors well with the gospel. And we can do that without opening the doors of a building. So again, just just to be clear and just to review, number one, we are targeting phase four uh, between the weeks of June 14th and July 4th to reopen the building for services, but that is subject to change given the data. Uh, Number two, uh, we encourage you to put June 14th on your calendar and join us uh, uh, in the parking lot for our next outdoor service. Number three, we encourage you to pursue uh, ways for you uh, to connect with your social group, uh, to pray for them and to make sure they're okay, to serve them well. And in four, we ask that you continue to pray. Pray for God to protect all of us from harm. Pray that God continues to use us as salt and light, all of us as salt and light, and a message of hope for our community. Uh, Pray for your leaders uh, that we assess this situation in in a very wise and informed way to be able to make decisions that are best uh, for our church community and the community at large. And so I want to close with this question, friends. We have to ask ourselves the question, what is ultimately important? What is ultimately important? I know what we want. We want, all of us want this to be over. But but before it's over, what is ultimately important? Well, I think Paul said it really well in Galatians chapter 5. He says, uh, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. The only thing that counts. He says the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Faith expressing itself through love, which means regardless of your opinion, your desires and your preferences, if it's a choice between opinion and faith, opinion and truth, we must surrender our opinion to truth. And if it's a choice between opinion and love, friends, we are called to love. And so may we, may we set aside what we want uh, and answer the call of what Jesus wants for us in our church community and in our community uh, that we live in. Can I pray for you? Father, you are so good to us and you have demonstrated uh, yourself in ways, revealed yourself to us 
in ways that we would never have experienced uh, without the experience we're in right now. And so, Father, we continue to ask uh, for your guidance and your direction, Father, for your uh, character to be revealed to us, the lessons that you want us to learn in this situation. And so, Father, as we look forward, as we move forward, as we lean into uh, the next phase that you have for us, uh, may we have eyes uh, to see what you have for us, and we have hearts that are willing uh, to submit and surrender uh, to what you have for us. And through all of it, Father, may you be praised and honored and glorified, and may we be a, a reflection of your love to those around us. We pray this, Father, in your Son's name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy. There is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. And holy, there is no Yeah.
inside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me God, we worship you God, we just pray for um, unity. God, in our community, God, that all of us would be able to come together, that we would be able to find more things that we have in common than things that were that separate us. Um, God, and we just thank you for Pastor Tim and his word this morning. God, we just pray that you would help us this week as we um, try to not just that we try to be the church. God, that you would reveal to us ways that we can make that happen. Regardless of what place you put us at, that God, we would have open ears and eyes sensitive to your Holy Spirit leading us to go out and change the world. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Well, hey, thanks for joining us uh, today and, and watching our online mm -hmm. service. Um, we just wanted to, you know, conclude today um, just talking about, you know, our final thoughts from today's yeah. message, um, our final takeaway. And I have a couple of thoughts that I want to conclude with uh, before we end the service this morning. Uh, but James, uh, after you've heard what I've had to share, mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's your initial takeaway? What's your thoughts? Yeah, it, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's really good to be able to take your personal belief hat off. Mm -hmm. Um, and really look at, at this through the lens of servanthood uh, to other people. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's the family that is pregnant, the family that has a new baby, um, the elderly, you know, the immune compromise, you know, we're serving uh, other people mm -hmm. by, by helping them be protected uh, in this. And I think that's, that's something that can get missed in this mm -hmm. when you have your personal belief, uh, the stubbornness almost, mm -hmm. if I can say yeah. that, uh, of like, we have to meet. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think you said it, um, you know, the church never stopped meeting. Um, you know, if you're strong in your faith, mm -hmm. this is just a bump in the road. Yeah. This isn't this isn't a deterrent. This isn't something that's going to throw you off forever. Um, but this is one of those hiccups yeah. and we have to get through it. And that's not to minimize your experience. No. I certainly don't. I want to I, I want to be sensitive to everyone's uh, situation and what and what they're going through personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I have, uh, I've got some dental issues right mm -hmm. now, and I know anybody that's had a toothache or mm -hmm. any kind of a problem like that, any, any, any particular problem, it is really easy for us, and it's natural for us to get self-focused. Yeah. You know, to go inward. When we're hurting, it's hard uh, to think of, of anything else but the pain that we're trying to yeah find comfort for, trying to overcome and that sort of thing. And so we totally understand yeah. uh, where a lot of people are in this situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, as you said, you know, the church has never shut down. The church yeah. is still operating. And so uh, I just want to leave us. I, I thought of two words that I mm -hmm. think I want to leave us with this morning after we've heard uh, what I've just shared. And those words are patience and purpose. Mm -hmm. Patience and purpose. There is an end to this situation. Yeah. We know that there is. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been through crises like this before. And so uh, we just need, uh, we, I was thinking about this, we don't just need to weather the storm. Yeah. We need to find purpose yeah. in the storm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, our purpose, our, our, our goal is not just to get through this, mm -hmm. but for God to use us in this. Mm -hmm. So patience, knowing that, uh, that there is an end in sight, that, that God will bring us through this. But while we're in it, what does God want us to do? Mm -hmm. and, and for that, uh, again, going back to our own pain, one of the best ways uh, to deal with, with our situation is to help in the situations mm -hmm. of others. Mm -hmm. We find peace and joy by helping others find peace yeah. and joy. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, when you can find your purpose, what is God asking you to do in this mm -hmm. situation? Reach out to your family, your neighbors, you know, uh, be more generous. Uh, uh, you, have, you have donated food and money and all kinds of things to help those in need. Continue to find ways of service mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and live out your purpose. And when you're living at your purpose, this waiting time, yeah. Yeah. is just gonna shorten up, yeah. you know? Uh, and so that's, uh, Patience and purpose. Patience and purpose. I like it. Yeah. So.
Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure you guys check out the Rise Up podcast this week. It's going to be on Monday and Friday. Uh, and then Pastor Tim will put out a blog on Wednesday as well. Uh, make sure you, you know, Ooh. check out our website. Uh, there we have a ton of information on there. You can continue to online give on there. Um, stay updated. Our prayer group is going to be linked uh, yes. to the page. And yes. so Wednesday night, if you want to join us prayer. at 6 o'clock, uh, 30 minutes of just checking in with each mm -hmm. other and praying for one another. It's a great way to connect. Yeah. Uh, so if you're looking for that connection, I want to encourage you to participate. Uh, I invite you to Wednesday night prayer group. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, we got a lot going on. Yeah. So stay connected with us yeah. and we'll see you guys throughout the week. See ya.